Uh, but so far that sounds good. But then also I was talking about the head job that me and Calvin did. It doesn't sound like it was done incorrectly, which is a big weight off my shoulders. All right, so we did have a slight issue. Uh, so the car did run. It started pretty easy, Danny said, which was good. Everything seemed pretty good. We got about five minutes of idling in and we got the data that we needed off it. But we started to notice a leak of oil underneath the car, which is something that we were looking for. And it seems that it's coming from the front main seal, which is something that I did replace. I mean, we did it like six months ago at this point. So it's hard to recall like what happened or all I do remember is that we did replace the front main seal and we must have bent it or something as we put it in. We must have screwed something up because it's leaking just enough for it to dribble a little bit. So we're still on track for our down day this Friday. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap out the front main seal tomorrow and then Danny's actually gonna come back tomorrow night. Shout out to Danny. And we're gonna get the last couple things. What more do you need to technically do to it? I need to make sure the timing is synced properly to the ECU and then just kind of go over everything kind of with spark plugs are in it and stuff like that. Just super simple things. Definitely have some more work to do, but beyond that leak, everything went good, which is a very, very good sign. I was very, very nervous. And it looks like I did good on the head install, but stupid, easy mistake on the front main seal. So kind of sucks, but we can easily fix that tomorrow, way before Danny comes tomorrow evening. Same as last time, but this time we got a Red Bull. And you already know, we got our water. That's actually super cool. And we have a Kuya. <laughs> I'm back. We're almost there. I'm We're super excited. There. I'll keep you guys updated. But just like yesterday, we got here in the late afternoon where there's just tons of traffic. So it's taken quite a long time to get up here, but it's definitely going to be worth it to see this thing actually be perfect today. Day two, round two. Danny's coming back to finish up what we started yesterday. So as you guys saw at the end of yesterday's video, we definitely had a leak underneath the car, which ended up being uh, the front main seal was damaged, which started leaking everywhere. And then also that bled all over to the belt, which coated the belt. So Dan literally today pulled everything apart. Uh, they replaced the front main seal and they put a new belt on there as well. And also, Dan, did you say that the backlash on it was off and you had to do stuff uh, off? So on um, intake side, the the backlash when we measured from like the buckets to the cam lobes was a little bit on the high side while well, it's over with inspect for Toyota. So then we pulled that cam out, pulled the buckets out, swapped them to a little bit higher height buckets and then put it back in so it's within Toyota spec and it's good to go. So moral of the story, don't trust your machine shop that you found on the internet with high ratings and from your friends. Only go to places that you know yeah. from personal experience that um, get the job done. So that was actually a worry that Dan was talking about yesterday and as we found out today, definitely wasn't where we needed to be so huge shout out to Dan they literally were working on this car all day and replaced everything got everything ready to go and now Danny's gonna do some button pushing again and figure out what needs to be done which is technically what is left that you need to do so I need to do the timing with the timing light like we did with the Z you have AC on this thing so I need to set up the AC button to make sure the ECU knows when you're trying to turn on the AC and so if it does, I need the motor to idle up and then so it doesn't stall on mm -hmm. you whenever you uh, turn on the AC. And that's, uh, and then kind of check any more leaks, set fuel pressure, little things here and there. Check we, the spark. We can't spark technically plugs. drive it today if we didn't go and boost, right? Or, yeah. <laughs> your face is like lit up you're like you could you can but like you don't well obviously we wouldn't go and boost or anything no, we would just just not. move it for fun but like we technically could I think it should have if all if everything checks out okay if we have no leaks if we have no leaks which <laughs>
we just got the AOK -okay from Danny that everything looks to be good. After having it running for the last 10 minutes or so, we haven't developed any leaks. Nothing is uh, looks to be scary or anything, so that's all a good sign. So what we're actually gonna do uh, with the good graces from Danny is he said, we're clear to drive it up and down the street. And of course, we're not gonna be full throttled or anything stupid. We're literally probably gonna barely go above 3,000 RPM, but at least just drive it up and down the street just to make sure nothing weird happens. We obviously wanna stay out of boost, and this is a very, very, very base just to have the car run. But it's a precaution that we wanna take just to make sure everything is as solid as we think. And we should be ready to get this car on the dyno to get everything ready to go. But nonetheless, super, super excited. We're gonna see this thing off the lift for the first time in six months and add a bonus to that. This is the first time that we're gonna see this car with the new front bumper and the side skirts and just, it's everything. Like the whole entire body is on the car and this is the first time we've, we're ever gonna see it ever be all together. So very, very excited. And I don't know if this is gonna happen today, but uh, Dan needs to get his main pro car out on the street and just make sure everything's kind of good. And uh, so we need to do a little test drive on that. The one we drove the other day was, was his practice pro car, which is significantly less power. And we're gonna try to get Calvin in the front seat of the car to do a ride along with Dan, which Ke and Calvin has never even been in my drift car. So I know that Calvin's reaction if Dan sent it with him in the car would be amazing. So I'm not promising it today. If it doesn't have today, we'll have to do it another time, but we might try to sneak Calvin in the car today if we can convince him. Was like all the way at the bottom, I almost stalled it pulling it out. Dude, look how good that looks. This is the first time we've seen it like in the sun, in the flesh, in like six months. Oh my god. Dude. And this is the first time we can actually see the carbon on the car, you know what I mean? Yeah. Bro got me sitting in the back here, bro. Shout out to Calvin for scrunching up in the back. We're gonna do a couple, uh, just, I guess we're gonna do some data logging just so Danny can get an idea of like what's going on when the car is driving. We definitely need to do some adjustment on the clutch pedal because it's like the engagement at the very, very bottom and it's like an all or nothing switch. So if it looks like I'm struggling to drive this car, that's why. AC works. Just checked AC, it works. That's really good. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty good. And it installed the car. Install yeah, I was gonna say the car didn't really change. He hasn't been in the Supra so long that he's playing with the <laughs> buttons again. I, I, dude, it feels like it's been forever. Like I'm trying to like remember and like familiarize myself with it. It's been a long time since I've driven right-hand drive. Oh, we're Everything dead. about this car, dude. I haven't driven this in so long. We're dead. So you're basically telling us we're dead. Like kinda. Oh yeah, like, more or less. Oh hell yeah, dude. It's like, dude, the moment my foot comes off that clutch, like not even a, not even like a half inch, it's like, the, it's disengaged. So it's, I'm gonna kind of have to just like lurk us forward. Yeah. Ooh, reminds me of the 240 clutch. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. Gnar. What RPM should I stay under? Already, dude. <laughs> Danny's putting us over the railroad tracks yeah. right now. Oh, oh, railroad tracks. So, other than the excitement right now, 
how does it feel when like you're um it feels really 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 smooth like okay. it doesn't nothing feels sorry i'm gonna turn around and go down yeah 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 or maybe we'll just go down side street like everything feels really smooth nothing like i don't i'm like, I'm like trying to come up with like something that feels weird yeah. you know what i mean but i'm probably only like a quarter of the throttle in yeah i can see that So after the first drive, the car felt good. It drove smooth, but the one issue that we are noticing is that uh, Danny said that the intake air temperature is reading really, really high when we're off throttle, and it's getting really, really low when we're off throttle. Like when we're on throttle, like it's almost kind of like a heat soak. So that, other than that, it felt really good. I want to add in really quick because I realized I didn't from a clip of us doing this, but the reason why the intake air temperature was reading that is because it was in the intake manifold and Dan said that sometimes when it's so close to the block, it like kind of gets in that, it kind of absorbs the heat from the block and that's when we're on throttle, when it sucks in fresh air through the intake manifold, it reads normal temperatures and when you're off throttle, when it's, when it's closed, it's just like heat soaking from all of the course. What we ended up doing is they were worried that that was going to happen, so they drilled a bung on the intake pipe before the intake manifold so it reads more clean air so we just switched that sensor from the intake manifold uh put a plug in it and then switched it on the intake pipe going to the intake manifold i hope that clears all the confusion all right so i asked dan to go and drive the car one because i want him to feel the clutch engagement just to make sure i'm not crazy and two these coils feel really 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 stiff and dan was saying that the hks coils are off the shelf coils from the 90s and they're not the best thing out there i guess i didn't really know any better because all my cars i've ever got i've just bought in, you know whatever coils that were off the market and they were like more modern technology and apparently that coils from this era having really wow that's way louder than i thought it was going to be um they're not just not really up to date so i just kind of want him to feel those out and see if it's even worth trying to adjust the settings on it or if we should just figure out a new setup and three oh look at those tail lights so i forgot we did that look at that oh man we did the uh white led replacements on all the bulbs and i just forgot how good this car looks oh my gosh and i wanted to get some rolling shots of dan driving the car because i haven't seen this thing drive and you guys haven't seen it yet oh my gosh i feel like a little girl right now <laughs> Oh, there's the clutch chatter, but the clutch feels good. It's ACT's clutch and it feels really, really good, but it's just aggressive, but we needed that. Oh my God, bro. Oh my God. <laughs> that is the best looking car in the whole entire world, hands down. Oh my gosh. Wow. And the camera doesn't do it justice, but like it just looks so wide from the back with that setup that we have. It looks insane. Oh my gosh. Oh, I missed it so much, guys. I wish we could take this to take delivery of the 2020 Supra. Dude, it looks so badass. I love it. But how's that clutch engagement though? It's pretty- it's way too low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like pretty, yeah, aggressive. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Oh my gosh. Dude. Oh, I'm gonna get a quick picture. Oh man, feels good boys, feels good. I just can't stop staring at this car. I'm happy to share this moment with someone who not only shares the same excitement as me, but probably loves it more than me. Dude, that idol sounds so cool. It's such a deep, deep idol compared to the 350. And back away she goes. I didn't catch you that time, but I'll catch you the next time, my Nino. No, you ain't gonna get me, you ain't gonna get me. <laughs> Not gonna So 
little cow. Yeah. She's loud to you. You're going for a little... I'm going for a spin, Dan said. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. The last time you were in a drifting car was with me at the Adams track yeah. in my stock 350Z yeah. when I didn't know how to drive. Dan sends it. You're about to go from zero to a million. <laughs> oh. I don't think anybody knows how excited I am to see his reaction in that car. Dan drove me in this one yesterday. Insane. This one has 400 more horsepower. So we're adding fuel, but you can get in and get belted up because I'll take you something. And then I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> TJ himself hasn't been in this car yet. And I don't know if you guys watch Dan when he's an FD, but this man is the definition of Sen. If I said that I wasn't a little scared. Because the last time, as TJ said, the last time I was in a drift car was with TJ when he didn't know how to do things. Dan knows how to do things. And he sends it on the knife's edge. This car is really exciting. 